So the people saying, oh, Putin just had him murdered last week because they're idiots. They don't actually know anything. They don't know anything. These are the same people who told us that Ukraine was going to win. Really? Russia has 100 million more people and far deeper industrial capacity. Like that's insane. No person outside the United States thought that for a second that Ukraine could win. Not maybe they're rooting for Ukraine. Maybe not. I mean, who knows? But as a factual matter. The information desert that we live in is really, really scary. And sometimes I think maybe the average North Korean knows more about what's happening in the world than the average American who watches NBC News because it's just so distorted. The lies are like so it's like a vacuum. You don't even like like uh, the, the two facts I just stated. Russia has 100 million more people and the capacity to produce seven times the number of artillery shells as all of NATO. Like Those are just two facts that I'm not sure the average person in knows. this country had it's ever heard before. And those are the determinative facts in a ground war. Do you have more people? Do you have more materiel? Do you, do you have more you know, howitzer shells? And like the people making these decisions, Anthony Blinken, Anthony Blinken, I can't believe that guy is the secretary of state. What a mediocrity that he doesn't know that or something like the whole. They're just so ignorant that it's scary. Super, well, are super they, scary. But I don't know if they are ignorant. Look at look at the Iranian policy. Who doesn't know Iran is a terrorist state that really, truly means they're going to burn the Jews in the fire of the Islamic fury? Who doesn't know that? Who doesn't know that enough to say, you know what? We shouldn't send over eight billion dollars. We, we just shouldn't do it. We, we shouldn't play. I got to be honest. I understand that. I, that was, of course, something that Obama did. And there was and? quite a bit of debate with party and right. he boy he pushed it through and uh, i've thought about that for almost it's been almost 10 years no but um, biden and has I don't, biden i think has done another allowed them to dip in to another six billion um you know as long as it's used for peaceful purpose you don't you would never make that deal with adolf hitler you you, you know who they are you know somebody said to me once is a rattlesnake a bad pet no, it's a perfectly fine pet, as long as you always remember it's a rattlesnake. We are treating people who are in our own country like enemies and people who are oppressing people. We're, we're treating them like friends. Well, yeah, I've I've noticed that. And and I have to say the disproportionate outrage at the Russians um, is puzzling to me. But again, all of it is playing out against the backdrop that I care about, which is life in the United States. And I feel like we're in a moment where things are moving south at high speed, yes. particularly the demographic replacement, American citizens being replaced by foreigners who are being encouraged to go into the military. Let's let's hand them. We don't know who they are. They don't know anything about the United States. They may or may not be loyal to it. Let's give them guns. I mean, where do you think that's going, Glenn? I mean, of course. The military will be used, as it was on January 6th, as a tool of domestic political control, yes. obviously. And it's much easier to do that with foreigners than it is with people who grew up in this country. So that's way scarier than anything that happened to Navalny in some Siberian. I mean, I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. It's like I'm against putting Navalny or any political opponents in jail ever, whether it's the January 6th people who are still rotting, whether it's Navalny whether it's Gonzalo Lira, the American citizen who died in custody in Ukraine. I mean, I'm opposed to all of that. stuff. Right. But I don't understand this weird externalizing process of emotion that happens for a lot of well-educated Americans where well, they they don't they're not mad about what's happening around them. They're mad about what's happening in some country they've never been to. It's like, what is that? We, in other words, it's like you, you know, you've got a kid who's a drug addict, but you don't have time to drive him to rehab because you're sending money to the you drug know, company. Burkina Faso. <laughs> Or something. No, but you're sending it to like some kid you've never met oh. in a country you've never been to. It's like, what is that? Yeah. And I and the last thing I'll say is I've noticed that a lot of the most passionate sort of advocates for this idea that, you know, the only problems are abroad and we need to spend all of our money on those problems are people with very weird and hollow personal lives. I, I'm sorry. I'm not I don't want to be mean. I'm just being honest. Very dishonest, personalized, creepy personal lives, unsettled inside like a normal.